He'd been here this afternoon. Right. It was all right. Dr. Castro, roll two, take one. Another thing, I was speaking, uh, different nations, different conditions, different conditions, different ways of the progress. And I think that the capitalistic system is not eternal, as was not any uh, social system, not feudalism, not ancient, uh, all of the uh, Roma, Grecia, Greece. Greece. Their system were not eternal. There is not eternal class social system. That is why I think soon or later all this, this the social system will change in all all the world. That is my idea. When you were in Moscow, you spoke very highly of Prima Khrushchev's policy of peaceful coexistence and his desire to get along with all nations and to lessen tensions. He is. Now, does this extend to approval of the Test Ban Treaty? When uh, the treatment we said it was a good news and that the human humanity reach it as a good news. But our situation was, was an special situation. We spoke about, mm, about this problem in the United Nations. We said that uh, the, there, is, there was a special situation because while the United States signed the, the, treatment, the, treaty. the treaty in Moscow, the uh, United States policy about Cuba increased uh, subversion, uh, sending weapons, and so, in consideration of our s a special situation, we didn't want to sign. So you will not the sign the test ban treaty. What? While this situation pers persists, persist. while this situation of aggression from the United States to Cuba persists, we don't uh, have not decided to sign. If this situation change, and our special situation disappear, we would sign. We, we think it was one advance, not, a, not a, a complete advance. I think it was one step uh, in favor of peace. What situation would have to exist for you to sign the Test Ban Treaty? When the United States leave us in peace, that is the situation. Cut. I'm going to, that's all right, because no, this is necessary. I'm going to move now to a, a series of questions on Zanzibar, going, Venezuela, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. Dr. Castro, many well-documented reports claim that you had a hand in the Zanzibar revolution and that possibly a dozen key men were trained here in Cuba. Is that so? The son of the leaders, son of the the men that were in the revolution, they said they have visited Cuba. I heard that they, some of the, they said they lived in Cuba. It's possible in Cuba they learn some experience, but uh, not learn your own experience in the United States. But this, the, that are things that I don't understand. But there have um, also been reports that South Africans are undergoing training here in Cuba for an that eventual uprising against the government Sada, there. That is not true. That is not true. I, if, of course, if somebody wants to come to Cuba to learn our, about our revolution from us, from Africa, for example, if somebody wants to come to Cuba to see what we are doing, to study our experience, we would be agree. Why not? But the truth is that nobody is uh, uh, demanding us to come to Cuba and to, yes, but the, and to, to learn our experience. That the truth, I think that is a, an exaggeration, really. Well, the black African in South Africa <coughs> lives under a brutal and oppressive tyranny. I'm sure you agree with that. 
Surely you would not be against training someone here to overthrow that kind of regime. Brutal y tiránico. Ella está segura que usted no tendría nada en contra de entrenarlos aquí. I don't know why you speak about one special nation. It is very no. specific. You asked me Wait, about... No, 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 no. ¿Qué es lo que es lo que comenzó? Uh, Dr. Castle, go to... Take two. You asked me about the training here as a subversive agent. You asked me about the uh, training as a subversive agent. And you asked me especially on, for example, South Africa. I said, I think that the, anybody who wants to come to Cuba and to uh, learn our experience, social experience, our history, we are not going to stop any revolutionary who want to come to learn about that matter in Cuba. But as, as a practical thing, I think about the practical of the way and the, the experience to make a revolution, my belief is that the revolution is not a, a matter of training each subversive each. What I believe sincerely is that the, it is better a principle, an international principle, that nobody uh, do anything in, in the inside problem of any nation. I think that the, the, the world peace will be sure when anybody try to introduce some political in, the, in another nation. And I think that it, this is a principle that ought to be practiced, not only by Cuba, but for all the world, including, of course, United States, because United States interfere in internal matter of the nation, trying to control revolution, because where are the counter-revolutionary prepared? are prepared in the United States. And you don't? And you don't? I... I don't. It is, it is not our poli policy. It is not our policy. They and found a cache of arms on a coast in Venezuela. It was known that your agents yes. were involved in the Panama riots. You know our position about the, that problems. But I, I can speak with you all what you want about that. It not means that I am going to answer everything you or FBI of CIA or State Department will be interested that I answer, of course. I am speaking about positions. And what I have to say about this, that we are agree with a principal policy. It, it, it means, well, uh, I am agree with international principle that no nation interfere in the internal matter of another nation. But if the United States don't want to live agree with international law, if the United States want to promote counter-revolution, reaction in all the world, the United States have not any, have any right to forbidding the right of the nation to defend from that policy. That is my opinion. Specifically, our State Department does not believe that you started the riots in Panama, but we do believe that your agents aggravated the situation after the riots happened. Now, do you accept or deny this charge? We have not agent in Panama. We have not agent. To have agent in all the world are necessary one thousand million dollars like CIA have to spend in contra revolution weapons agent. We have no money to pay agents. Of course we have not agent in any place. And uh, concretely, concretely, con yes. concretely, concretely in Panama we have no agents. We have anything to do uh, with the problem of Panama. I mean that Cuba Government have not inter, not e, have any participation in Panama problem. As you know, the, the, the first reason was the mistake, first place of the United States students. They provoked the problem, and after the problem, to make fire over the crowd, crowd, crowd. over the crowd, and the problem were the very dead 
That is the real reason, not the real reason. That is a consequence of the special situation of the tra treaty, Panama Treaty. It's a treaty what, that was imposed by force at the beginning of this century. Okay, I don't by want to force. Go any more of that in Venezuela. That's okay. I'm sorry. Okay, let's keep rolling. Can we see? No, sorry. No, okay. Please don't do that. <coughs> it was oh, clear. Sorry, sorry. What about the situation, Dr. Castro, in Venezuela? Uh, a report by the OAS said that they did find arms on the coast, which came from Cuba. Uh, they have asked you to reply to that charge. What is going to be your reply? We answered that the OAS has any jurisdiction about Cuba because they 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 no expulsaron they expulsed us from the OEA and our position is that OEA has not moral to judge any kind of problem about Cuba because OEA didn't do anything while United States five years have been sending weapons to Cuba to fight against Cuban government, sending aging, promoting subversion and control revolution, and now appear one ac accusation against Cuba, and very soon everybody ready, ready to take measure again to Cuba, to judge Cuba. They would have right and moral to judge Cuba when they judge first to the United States, because the United States have been practicing during five years that political. That is our position about that problem. Are you anxious to get anxious? back into the family of the hemispheric nations? Nobody is anxious to be with a family if that family, the men who control, the, those who control that organization don't want us in that family. Would you be agree to be in one family that don't want that you be in the family? We didn't renounce to be in the family. We were expulsed by that family. And now our position is to wait. If the ruling classes in the other Latin American countries were to make reforms, drastic reforms, land reform, tax reform, and lift the standard of living of the people in Latin America truly, wouldn't your message lose a great deal of its significance? But that, is, that, that is an hypothetic supposition. What I believe is that the oligarchy that rules that nation and the military group reactionary that rule that nation will never make any kind of reform. And another thing, those men of the oligarchy, oligarchy, they said, you, you, you in the United States want that we divide our lands, make taxes, but you don't want to renounce to, our, to your interests here. Because I have said that some men of the oligarchy think that uh, if United States monopoly have a strong interest that are not going to be sacrificed, have not the right to demand them be sacrificed. Of course, in, in any nation that uh, where be taken, where, where social reform be taken sincerely and honestly, and the standard of living increase, the the in the discontent, the the discontent. Well, what I want to mean is the, if the so situation, social situation changes and violent revolution uh, have, are not, uh, have not the same possibility, of course, because the, the real, you in the United States go to understand that the real cause of revolution is poverty, hungry, oppression. You yes, know, but Dr. Castro, one of the most progressive governments in Latin America is Venezuela. And Who yet and why? And yet you save your most violent invective 
for Venezuela. Not the Dominican Republic, you think not some of the most reactionary I, governments, I but one answer, of the most progressive governments. I can answer you. Where well, was not Cuban government who, uh, who, who, who began this polemic? Was Venezuela government? They interfered. Their embassy, embassy when they had relation, was in connection with contra-revolutionary group. They wanted to break relation with Cuba. But I do not say that this one of the most progressive. What I think is the kind of government that you in the United States prefer, the kind of government that monopoly and those oil monopoly prefer because their profits are sure. For example, when Betancourt took power, they had 40,000 laborers working in the company. Now they have only 30,000. The profit of the company now are much bigger than they were when Betancourt took the, the power. That is why you say it's a progressive government. It's a progressive government for the interest of the monopoly, but it's not a progressive government for the interest of the, of the people, because Venezuela could, could be the most rich, richness nation of the world. Why are there 500 unemployed? Why are there 1 million un, un, uh, men without uh, illiter literate? illiterate? 1 million illiterate? Why, uh, why in, in Venezuela are there so many problems, social problems? Why the students are against that government? Why the, 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 the people are against that government? Because in the last election, Betancourt candidate only got 30% of the vote. You see in Cuba, the students are not against the government. The peasants are not against the government. The intellectuals are not against the government because this is a real progressive government. I want to you ask one question. Why the job people, the students, 95, same percent of the students are against government, Betancourt government. If government, if Betancourt were really a, a progressive government, but those who, who have got the the profits is not Venezuela people, are United States oil company who got the profits. That is why, for you in United States, Betancourt is same Betancourt, and I I. Something like a devil, Diab David, David. Uh, Diablo, David, yeah. something like a devil. Do you know that is the reason? That is my opinion. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, it has to be cut. I want a framed answer, and there's only one way to do it. Let him know. I wanted to frame an answer now. I right. want to keep rolling, mm -hmm. cut. <coughs> Dr. Castro, roll two, take mm -hmm. three. Dr. Castro, a central question of the revolution remains. Was a communist revolution your blueprint, or did Cuba become a communist state because of actions of the United States or because of the intrinsic conditions of the revolution? I know that some somebody have been excusing about that. The truth. Since the beginning, I always uh, thought in a social revolution, in a real social radical revolution. At the beginning, we were not thinking about the name, how, what the, some, how was going to be called that revolution. But we started from our own problems, from our own social situation, our needs, and uh, sincerely, I never fought for any kind of revolution if it was not going to be a social and radical revolution. Because to, to continue doing the same thing that happened in Cuba was not just to do anything. Yes, but did you want community. to make a communist revolution? Yes. Well, and then, our, you cannot call at that time in our thinking, if we were, uh, we were, we think that we could be called communist. What you call, do you use it to call a communist? You know? But a social revolutionary, of course. And 
Nobody can, could tell, tell at that time what was going to happen in the future. It, uh, how far could we go? It, it, it was going to depend about many situations. Of course, that the, the, the difficult difference between United States and Cuba, the aggressive position of the United States government about Cuba, uh, introduced a uh, new element in the situation. Uh, introducing the Cold War here. Somebody in the United States said that we introduced Cold War. That is not true. And see, before we speak about socialism, not communism, before speaking about socialism, when we made our agrarian reform, in, in the United States began the plans to invade. And Bahia Cochino invasion was planning uh, about when we made the agrarian reform. Now you are speaking about agrarian reform, but four years away, ne no one in the United States spoke about agrarian reform. After Cuban Revolution, you are speaking about agrarian reform and about many social reform. But the truth is that you began to plan aggression against Cuba when we made the first reform, when we began to make reform. Of course, that the special situation helped the, the, the deep, radicalization. the radicalization, of course, helped the radicalization of the revolution. But I'm talking about your proclamations of the CIA. The real Maestra, situation. When you in, said, in but I, I must interrupt you for just a moment. When you said, we are not communist, we are revolutionaries. Well, I am against communism because communism violates freedom. Did you mean that at the time? Were you not I, a communist I then? Want, I want to see in what, uh, in what uh, written did you read that? Because as I remember, I never spoke in that situation. Because when we said we are not communist, we were was telling the truth. We could not consider us, in first place, as member of the Communist Party. We were not member of the Cuban Communist Party. We were not member of an uh, international organization. We thought we were revolutionary. We wanted to make a, a, a radical change in our nation. Uh, but we didn't call us uh, communists because we were not member of the party, not in connection with any international party. Our idea, our socialistic idea, of course, and if you read my speech, when I defend myself, when Moncada attack, you will find most of the law that when revolution took power, we established here in Cuba. You can read that, our things, and you can read that I didn't speak in favor of capitalism. I didn't speak in favor of private enterprise. On the contrary, I said that with a private enterprise, that living in the hand of the private interest, the solution of the Cuban problem, Cuban problem will never solve. It would be good that you read which were our ideas. We were not members of the, uh, any communist party. We were a new group of young men with a radical idea that we are trying to make a revolution during the, 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 the in our road, we find, uh, uh, we make a relation in the revolution, we make relation with another party, all kind of party, communist party, uh, uh, some uh, poli traditional political party. When we began to make our social reforms, those right party, or party of the right, right, right wing, right -wing uh, party, reactionary party, become against us, communist party did not come against us, they, they were with us. All those uh, left, left. left party and left organization, left intellectual, uh, uh, took place in our favor. So revolution um, uh, advanced and uh, new social reform, new problems 
with United States, with reactionary party. So we were finding in, with the other organization in our road. And sincerely, I can tell you now, after five years revolution, we are satisfied of our actual position. We are satisfied of w about what we have made. We think that in this way, we will advance in 10 years what we could not advance in 50, in 50 years. You talked if about you in the United States be in condition of analyze objectively, if you be in condition of analyzing in the United States, many of the United States sitting will understand what we are doing, what is our future in spite of the blockade in spite of the difficult the United States is stand in our in our road. President Johnson said uh, just this week that he was sorry that the passengers of the Cuban fish fishing vessels were placed in prison and that he Sorry, hopes what to, uh, okay I want to turn to that yeah. oh, well, then that's the truth that's the truth <laughs> and I'm insulted I'm highly insulted but it's good that I tell something like that I speak about that don't you think hmm. I'm not ready okay this is roll two Dr. Catherine do you take <laughs> Doc, oh. Dr. Castro, President Johnson said that he personally was sorry that the passengers of the Cuban fishing vessels were placed in jail and that he hopes they can get out as soon as possible, but that he thought your reaction to what happened was too strong. Now, if you had known what President Johnson's attitude was, would you have turned off the water at Guantanamo? First place, I, I read the cables, and I don't, didn't re, uh, read exactly that he was sorry that they were being sent to prison. I read this morning the cable. But you said me, had you heard about that? President Johnson said that he personally was sorry they had been placed in jail. Mm -hmm. And he further added that we must understand that the United States government can't control everything. He also said that he wanted to get along with every country in the world. If he said that he was sorry about the fissure, I think it's a, it's a good uh, declaration. And of course, we believe uh, sincerely when the fissure were at Kaksuri and said to preach, that it, 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 we were in, in facing a new hostility policy, a new aggression policy. And of course, everybody in Cuba was very much unsatisfied with that nation. We think it was unnecessary. We thought, we thought it, it was unnecessary, unjust, not legal, because the, the water of the United States, how many laws about the waters? Two laws, one, one uh, United States, uh, one national law, one state law. I think that it is a matter of national law. But you realize that this was not a federal policy, but a state policy. But now, some days after, now, no, the state policy, but were federal forces of Kashuri, who took the prisoner, the, the fissure, were federal forces. And uh, now we are, the, are getting the impression that uh, it was a special situation with the fissure. Now we are not very much sure now at this time that was a deliberated plan of provocating us. That is my, my actual, now my impression. But we are waiting what they are going to do because the situation is not a legal situation. And I don't know, they, they send it to prison, 36 prisoners. 
they were 38. Two of them were isolated. So they, that means that it was not the, the fault because they sent them to prison only to those who didn't want to assimilate, to demand a, a, a political asylum in the United States. And they are, they have in their hands a non-legal, uh, a, a not legal uh, matter, legal, their situation is not legal. And I think another, th another thing, another thing I think, that it's not good for the United States to do that. Because the United States have many times problems with their fishing ships in several places. And what is the United States going to do if in every time they have a problem with jurisdictional water, their ships are capturing, they are, they are fishing men send it to prison, judge it, that is not a good precedent, really, for the United States. I don't know why they did that. Was President our, Johnson's our, our measure was as a reaction in consideration and uh, to the illegal measure of sending to jail to our fish. That is the only objective of the measure. Somebody said that we were trying to, to uprise a problem with the na Navy base, and that is not true. We have declared very clear that we were not making a fight for throwing the United States from the base. I think it is a legal problem. I Dr. Castro's interview, roll four, take one. Really, I can tell you something now in the actual situation. We don't need it. We have not a special need of commercial relation with the United States. I, I think that commercial relation can be uh, good for both parts, but it's not uh, essential for any of the parts. What you can observe, the United States have spent thousand million dollars with the sugar. They are paying now the sugar at a very, very high price. They are spending very much gold in sugar. Many of the product, American products that they can sell to Cuba, they have not market now for them. Uh, commercial relations can be good, but are not essential. Not for the United States, of course, and either for us. So we, when, this, when we speak about peace, they are not thinking about that uh, commercial, uh, uh, commercial relation, any kind of economical relation. I think it's good for both nations to live in peace, really. That is what I think. But uh, it, it seems that in the United States there are many people that don't see so now. I think that they will, will understand. So, for example, with Mexico, they didn't want to live in peace no? many years. We are patient. We can wait five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. We are patient, sincerely. And I think that it is not easy now to, to establish economic and commercial. You said I, I, if I was realistic, and I, I, I am realistic. But I am realistic, I think that we can live in peace. And peace is interest for them and for us, and for everybody. That is our, our position. Started, took place in Cuba under when, when with a, a, a Republican administration, because Eisenhower was president, first measures were taken by the Republican against Cuba, and they failed. Then Kennedy continued that policy. I think it was a mistake of Kennedy to continue Republican policy with Cuba, because Republican policy was, uh, was called to, to fail. Republican failed, but when Democratic Democratic administration continued that policy, Republican Party had an, a weapon, an army, against Democratic administration. Do you know? And that is the situation. Uh, you see, World Water speak very much. Sincerely, I think that uh, nobody is going to vote 
to all water. Don't tell that I am, I am interfering United States internal matter, but you ask me about my opinion. And why? Um, all water take a, a very aggressive political international, a very dangerous policy. I think it takes that position for demagogic. But uh, I think in the United States enough conscience, conscience of the dangers of a, 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 a war, war, the danger of the atomic war. And I think that no doubt, nobody can doubt that a kind of man like all water, demagogic, demagogic man that is making compromise, that is making a special aggressive policy, will be very dangerous for world peace. Goldwater and continually... In, in war, wait, wait, war. I have to frame yes. something. Yeah, but let me frame this and we'll, we'll, it'll be better. Goldwater has continually, in the strongest terms, asked for an invasion of Cuba. Now, if he were to become president of the United States, what do you think would be Cuba's fate? Well, he never uh, speak about a, a, a United States soldier invasion. He speak about one invasion with mercenary and help it with airplanes. That is his position. He he don't he have some careful, some carefully. But in general, in every international matter, all water position is not responsible responsible at all position. That is true. I don't vote in the United States. I have any kind of compromise of making policy for one or for another uh, candidate in the United States. But uh, that is my opinion. That is my opinion. And I, I am sure, I am completely sure that at this time, that reactionary policy of the water will have never have majority in the United States. And I, I think he, with his demagogic, is opening a hold. Nobody want war. Nobody want atomic war. Only crazy people will want atomic war, because atomic war means disappearance of everybody, and will be not uh, any kind of victory in, in a, an atomic war. That you is my opinion. You want that is why I'm not, I am, we are not worried from world water. Why? Well, world water, world water is nominated. It's possible and mm, be elected. It's possible he change because one music is when they are aspiring, and they are make, making political campaign, and another thing when they have the responsibility about what is going to happen. Is, there is a lot of of different. So, suppose that uh, one man like Goldwater is nominated, we will sit to wait and to see what is going to do. In any case, we are afraid. In any case, we have been in very difficult situation. We have been facing a lot of danger. Excuse me one minute, but he's afraid, afraid, and I mean he means not afraid. Uh -huh. I know that. We are not afraid is what he means. We, I, ah. He means not yes. afraid. Yes, I know that. What I said. You said we are afraid. We, yeah. we are never afraid. We are not going to be afraid. That is what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell that we have been facing very risks, uh, uh, minutes full of risk in several times. And in any case, we will, in any case, we will be afraid. In, not, not, we yeah. will not be afraid in any case. Wait, I'm going to frame a question again. Okay. Uh, you said it once. I assure you that some change was taking place under Kennedy administration. So Kennedy was assassinated. That is why we said it, it was a bad news because we were facing a new situation and we could not know what new thing can happen. And we are observing the situation now. Dr. Castro, moving to 
your revolution. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that Cuba is a police state? Do you believe? You have been living here in Cuba about two weeks. Take one. We are not we are not a hurry now to discuss about Navy base. We think we have time to discuss about that by diplomatic ways and by in, in international way, legal ways. That is our position since the beginning. And we we never have a, a provocated any problem about the base. In this special situation, we took a measure that we think we have, are in the right taking. Because what to do when you see that some Ill, Ill, unjust measure is taken, aggression is taken. And uh, I think that it is necessary, it is, it is uh, just to take a measure against another measure. But not, I repeat, was not a measure in consideration of the situation of the base, in consideration to the fishermen. And our position is, if justice, they are, they are, they are, this is, they are freedom, the fisher, as it is legal, it is a right that they be freedom, and the United States want the water again, we give the water again. They have spoken that they are going to 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 despedir. Fire. Votar. Fire. Fire. Sí. Dismiss. They are going to get away. Fire, fire. Fire, fire. Sí. The employees, the Cuban employees. I think it is not justice. Because they are going to take measure with men that have been working ten, fifteen, twenty years in the base. And I think that is not a, a politic, a, a, a good political measure. Okay, keep it going. I'm going to reframe the question here. Okay, keep going. Yeah. When you turned the water off at Guantanamo Bay, was President Johnson's reaction more mild than you expected? I cannot answer. Really. When we take the measure, took the measure in answering the measure that was taken with the fisherman, we are decided to 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 front, to face the situation, any kind of situation. Anybody can be sure what they were, what were they going to do. Of course, if they had a plan to and, and, and had a plan, provocation. I think that new provocation step could be taken. But really, after that situation, I think that in both, in both ways, Cuban government made uh, the declaration, declaration about our objective. And in the United States, they try to, to prove that there was, there not exist any special plan of provocation about Cuba. Both United States government and Cuban government uh, took forward on measuring. I think that they were were good measures. For example, we we are we took the measure of giving water one hour to children, women that live in that place, and in in United States. Uh, some declarations were made, and we we saw that in United States, some part of the people believed that it was a special Cuban plan against the base, and it is it was not true. It was declared there was not a special plan. The base really we don't want, and I don't know who wants uh, now to start problems. I don't know who is going to win with this kind of problem. We didn't want to, to, to produce any kind of, of friction. So our step, since November, we said to the Swiss ambassador that represents United States interest here, that we were 
in increasing our fishing operation that we were were thinking to fish near in the Gulf Stream near United States, not in national water of United States. Sincerely, we we believe that we have made enough to avoid incidents. So when incident started, nobody here could understand why the incident. I think sincerely was a mistake, a real mistake, and United States has has been very much criticized in Europe, not in, not only in socialist socialistic newspaper, in many newspaper in all the world. I have read it decade because nobody could be agree can be agreed with that measure, and that measure is against the interests of the United States because other nations can do the same with United States ship and United States fishermen. Okay. All right. Now, that's fine. Uh, tell Dr. Castro that I want to ask him ask everything. That, he, that he has spoken often of his desire to normalize relations with the United States. What is he prepared, it's a very important question, to concede to bring about this normalization of relations. Understand? And I'll, I'll pose it again. Okay, we'll start again. Dr. Castro, you... Not very difficult, because we have not caused that avoid in, in peace. That prevents. That prevent us of living in peace with other nations. I speak the truth, and I speak very sincerely when I said in peace means... Uh, Wait, I had to reframe something. Yes. Keep, keep rolling. Okay. If the United States... What? If the United States were willing to end the trade embargo and to reestablish diplomatic relations with Cuba in exchange for an end to what we call the exporting of revolution to other nations in the hemisphere, would you agree to some kind of inspection on your island to guarantee and prove that you were not exporting revolution? Okay. 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 If you ask the United States, we are not demanding economical help. We are not demanding commercial relation. We demand peace. And peace can be established over the base of respect to the sovereignty of our country. Peace can be established over the base of absolute respect of the international principle, absolute respect uh, of the sovereignty of all the nations. You understand? We can live in peace with all the nations in this hemisphere. Okay, this is Dr. Castro. Roll five, take one. Do uh, uh, stay off me. You on, on Castro? Off me? Yes. Okay. Dr. Castro. People that said you that. But, for example, if we live in a police state, why we do not forbid, forbid to the people to come to Cuba, to the bishop to come to Cuba? You in the United States forbidding the, the United States citizens to come to Cuba. We don't forbid the Cuban to go to the United States. We don't forbid to the United States citizens to, so, to come to Cuba. So I can say you have a police, a police state. You have many police organization, policemen, policeman organization, FBI, CIA, secret police, uh, all kind of policemen in all the state, federal policemen, state policemen in Cuba. We have million laborers, peasants, all they have weapons and the right of, of belong to the militia, to the army, the students are armed. So everybody has weapon in Cuba. That in any police state you can give the weapon to the people. 
because then the people will never accept the police, the state will never accept uh, oppression. So, if everybody has a weapon in Cuba, it means that everybody agree with the revolution. Not everybody, most of the people is with the revolution. That people defend the revolution in every situation. United States always are speaking about overthrown revolution with uprising. They don't need to send weapons to Cuba. We have some hundred thousand weapons. Everybody have weapons. But we have the people. The people is with the revolution. The people is army in Cuba. In Cuba we can say the people is the state. The people is the state in Cuba, and when the people is the state, you cannot speak about a policeman state. And we have not restriction to go out, not restriction to coming here to United States. You cannot do in United States where you like to speak about the freedom, individual freedom, and you don't permit the United States citizens to come to Cuba. Only few people like you that report and make make all kind of, of questions. You make all kind of investigations, inquisitive questions. So you are permitted to come to Cuba. But the real, sincerely, sincerely, I am. I cannot be the judge. I cannot be the judge of about what we are doing. I have not a special interest in refusing that. But I can say that uh, everybody can come to Cuba and to see what happened in Cuba. And they can make the judge. You have some mind, we have some mind. Wait it's a second. possible. I, I, I want to pick yes. up a frame Don't of question. Ahead, okay, yes. keep rolling. It's possible. Wait, wait, I want to frame yes. something. Dr. Castro, we have spoken. Well, wait a minute, on, on a one. Yes. Dr. Castro, we have spoken to people who said that they live in a constant state of terror, that they believe they are watched and followed, and that they fear... Nobody has problem. If they are making conspiration against the revolution, if they are agree with the uh, foreign policy, United States policy... Do you see, I, I, uh, for example, you can see how I work. I work. I visit every place. I have not 100 men with me. I have only a few group of men helping me between the people. Every body can come to speak with me in every place. I have never been afraid. And I would have reason, because in the United States many people, many control revolution have been trained to, to attend against my life. I am, I am not afraid. I, am, I feel sure between the people. I don't know what uh, if somebody has in their mind the idea they are danger. It is a, a, a subjective problem. Do you ever you believe fear for in your United life? States? But I want to frame something United? about assassination, um, about assassination mm. attempt, because you know, that was an issue the other week. We often read of reports of mm. attempts on your life. Do you fear for your life? Uh, for example, in, in Soviet Union, never anybody reached knew that I have been killed because anybody wished that I be killed. In the United States, there are many counter revolutions and I, many people, there are several people that would like to reach the new that I have been killed. They confuse their wish their illusion which they are <laughs> with the reality. But uh, until now I have lived five years between the people and nobody never have uh, making fire against me. I feel sure, I don't worry. And this is my job. For example, you see what paradoxic situation in the United States uh, the, the president f uh, felt sure absolutely sure. I am sure the United States government take much more measure for their personal security than I take. 
And they knew that the President of the United States had been killed. It was a surprise, a complete surprise. To anybody here in, in Cuba was a good news. Because in Chile we can be a political enemy, but we don't, don't wish the, die, the, death. the death of anybody. In some way, we felt when you have some oppositor and your oppositor disappear, you, you don't feel satisfied. In, in some sense, I, I, I felt that. What opposite? Oppositer that disappear in, in a way that we are we, we cannot be agree with that way. In the situation, well, I think that many people want I, I be killed. All we, all the men, are called to die soon or later. Anybody uh, uh, is somebody don't, do, does not know that. We know quite well that. Well, while we live, we we work, we fulfill our our job, and we are satisfied. We are happy, and we are not worried about that. If anything were to happen to you, I mean, what would what, what would you think? Well, I would ask him well, if anything would happen to him. What would come next? My opinion. Wait, let me let me pose this. If my anything, if anything were to happen to you, what do you think would be the fate of the Cuban Revolution? At the beginning, my my death uh, uh, could be a, a very hard strike to the revolution, but not now. We have five years. We have an organization. We have several men, several men that have wonderful, wonderful condition to to lead the country. I feel absolutely sure. Nothing will happen. Absolutely sure. I can give to the revolution my experience. Every one of us learned during the, the years. I have uh, some experience. I helped the revolution with my experience. But uh, you can be sure, as I am sure, that, uh, that nothing would happen. Of course, uh, we don't want to make the proof. But we are not worried. Sincerely, we are not worried about that. The revolution is not the the job of a man. Of a man, a revolution is uh, the matter and the job of a people. And the people join in, in, in difficult situation and take a chief in difficult situation. Not a revolution never hap disappear because the chief disappear. I don't want to make comparison. I am the leader of a small country, a, a revolution. But I suppose the great revolution, Soviet re revolution, leaning in a, in a very difficult situation, in much more uh, difficult situation than our situation. Dead, died, dead, died, died. 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 And, and revolution continued. Revolution is not the job of a man, it's the job of a people. Who would take over? I can. We, this is not a, a monarchy. And nobody is, is uh, deciding. At the beginning, at the beginning, when I understood it, it was a danger for the revolution that I be killed, I spoke about uh, Raul. But it is a problem that ought to be solved by the direction, the collective direction of the of the revolution. We have many, many men, many men. Uh, and as you see, we have a president. I am prime minister. My job is not a is a, is a political job. And I I give the strength to the idea, impulse. Impulse. I give impulse to many things, but we have the president, the minister council, we have a political party, we have the, uh, the direction of the political party. In that situation, the, the national direction of our party would design the prime minister.
to make the job that I do. But here in Cuba, uh, all the, 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 the principal problems, political problems, are discussed in, in our direction, in the direction. All the, the important problems. I never take a personal decision. Always I like to know the opinion of the other, and when we are agree, or we are agree, we take decision. Dr. Castro, is there any possibility that this revolution could go in another direction, that is, back to a democracy, to free elections, to many of the proclamations that you issued in the Sierra Maestra? You, mm, uh, it is not easy that uh, one United States, how uh, uh, un, un ciudadano corriente, un ciudadano a normal, common eh, a common citizen of the United States and a Cuban Revolution, can understand about those problems. You have your idea about democracy. We have our idea of democracy. democracy. For uh, democracy, there are many, many examples. For example, I can speak about unemployed. I can speak about Negroes in the United States. To know one of them, the Negroes who live in the South, the United States, and to know them, you can speak about the democracy. To many poor people in the United States, unfortunate people in the United States, you can speak about the democracy. By the, for them, democracy is a formal idea. You have two parties. Both controlled, controlled by oligarchy in the United States. You call that democracy in Athens, in the ancient Athens, Greek, in mm -hmm. ancient Greeks. They call democracy, democracy, and there were thousands, of, dozens of thousands of slaves. And, and you, they were speaking about democracy. You in the United States have many interests in all the world. Your company make to work very hard millions of men in Latin America and all the world, they have not rights, they have, they have not uh, uh, standard of living, they have not il illustration, illustration, education, and they have not hospital assistance, so you speak about your democracy. And, uh, and that is why uh, you, you never, it is not easy, some, someday you will understand our idea of democracy. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was... Are we on? Yes. Everybody ready? Okay. Ready. Okay, Dr. Castro, rule five, take two. Hmm. Dr. Castro, all the people that we talk with who oppose you said they opposed you because they thought that you were going to make a democratic revolution and instead you made yeah. a communist revolution. When they say democratic, they speak about capitalistic revolution, free enterprise revolution, monopoly influence uh, here. They are thinking in, the, in their class interest. They are not thinking in the peasant, in the labor, in the negroes, in the student, in the intellectual. They are thinking in their material. Interest. That is what they call democracy. Batista said he was democracy. General, but all, all those rich men, owner of lands, they were speaking about democracy. That is what they understand for democracy. Lincoln said democracy is the government of the people, by the people, for the people. Revolution, too, is the government to take, take, who take power with the people and make rules for the people. Nobody can deny that here our government is an honest government. We have disappeared all kind of vices in our society, all kind of rope, malversation. And here every rule is made to help the people. And we have made many things for the people. Uh, one million Cuban didn't know to learn and to write, to read and to write. They now know. Every everybody has assured their education in Cuba. Every every everybody have their job uh, assured in Cuba. The possibility of studying. Everybody white Negroes. Everybody in Cuba. People feel 
this. So you have to analyze deeply the problem of, of Cuba to understand our, our problem. We, now, we, we've, we have not formalized several things. We need to give a form in, to institutionalize several things. We had no time to, to do so many things during those five years. I want to put something about the education, because he mentioned yes. that. Let me go into this. Uh, <clears throat> we visited many of the schools, and we found an extraordinary uniformity. The children seemed to answer by rote. Uh, there seemed to be a, a good deal of Marxist indoctrination. Mm -hmm. There seemed to be very little independent thinking. Does that disturb you? Well, in your schools in the United States, what do you teach to your students? You teach your point of view, you teach, you speak then about enterprise, you free enterprise, you speak then about your business, your industry, your interest in all the world. Do you speak about that to your young? You try, you are the class who rules in the United States, try to teach what they want to their students. Here in Cuba, the revolution teach and prepare the young people for the revolution too. But an example, my personal example, I studied in one religious school since the, the first years until I, I was uh, um, uh, until I went to the university. What did they teach to me? I didn't decide which school. My father chose the schools, and they touch, touch, talk, 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 enseñaron, talk to me all, they wa all what they wanted. I had no the opportunity to choose. And in Cuba there were 100, religious school where the sons of the rich class were educated. Now we educate our young men in revolutions, idea too, in our ideas. Well, but we say to the people, we teach the people, we don't want ignorant people. We want people who learn to think, who learn to think. We don't say to the young boys, belief. We don't say belief. We say study. We say then think. If we were afraid that the people study and the people think, we, we never would uh, develop the education until the, 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 until the, the degree, grado, until the degree that we have developed. Education. We are teaching to everybody. We are educating to everybody. And if you know to read and to write, you are in better condition to think and to analyze. You can, you can lie to those ignorant people. ¿Cómo se dice engañar? Cheat. You cannot cheat educated people. And with revolutionary have real obsession to educate the people. So it proves we are not afraid that the people think and the people analyze. We are sure about our future. We are sure our, our, about our job, how, about our reason. You were revolutionary too at the beginning. When you make your independent war, you had to fight. What the England thought about you, you were liberal at the beginning. The England were monarchic, and the England were not agree, and the England went to Canadian, to other, to other places, and you in the United States began to teach to the people your constitution, the right, the declaration of right of the United States. You talk to your people that. So in England they said, they are liberal. To call somebody liberal in, in, in 1776, 76 was the same to call now socialist, Marxist, commun communist now. is the same. Those who went out to hear about, speak, to hear about communism, is a 
devil. But when you made your revolution, when you were called liberal, was the same as devil. Are you, do, are you comparing time, your revolution with our upon revolution? A time, you, once upon a time, you, you, you lived that experience. In the future, the world will give the reason to us. I am sure, and will not give the reason to you now, because you were liberal at the beginning, but now you cannot call yourself liberal. What happened in Vietnam? What happened in, in, in Latin America? You help dictator, you help a military group. You, are, you have been in, in good relation with oligarchy until Cuban Revolution. If you now begin to worry about social reform, was a consequence of Cuban Revolution. You, can you deny that? Could that not be a social consciousness on our own part and not the cause of the Cuban Revolution? No puede hacer que han tomado más conciencia social y no la causa de la revolución cubana. Well, but uh, it coincides very much with Cuban Revolution. I suspect. I have my doubt about that. Go ahead. Okay, on the, the, on the de Gaulle, you got two things. Yeah. Cruz, Jevon de Gaulle. You spent a great deal of time with Prima Khrushchev recently and on your first trip to Russia. What do you think of Mr. Khrushchev as a man, as a leader? I have the, a wonderful opinion about Khrushchev. I have spoken about that here in Cuba. I admired Khrushchev. He's a very human man, very human man, very sensible, how do you call it, modest man in his relation with everybody, with the people, with the other leaders. He's a very, very much intelligent man, very much. He's a very clear mind and he's a, a, a responsible man. He's a, he's a peace man too, really. He's a man worthy for peace. And, I understand him very well, and the uh, more I know him, uh, better impression I, I have about him. A wonderful impression, really, sincerely. You are now buying buses from England. You are talking about buying ships from Spain. I understand you have an economic mission in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Does this mean a radical change in your trade policy, Dr. Castro? No, never. What is the change? We never deny to, to make business with United States, with any nation. Was United States policy to cut our commercial relation with United States and all and those nations that you mentioned? It was not our policy. Our policy has been the, since the beginning to business with all the nations, and that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing now. We succeed with a lot of success. And I think it's a big mistake if the United States try to keep, to cut that relation because the United States cannot forget that nation have their problems. They are deep, deep in, uh, money problems. They need business, they need to sell, to solve their problems. Now, all the nations have economical problems. And it's not, it's a wise policy, that economical blockade. That is why that is not a realistic, you spoke about realism, that is not in any way a realistic policy. You, the American, like to, to, to say that you are practical people, that you are realistic people, but I have seen many, many things in which you don't prove to be very much realistic. And you call us that we are illusion, illusionistic people, that we are dreaming and we are proving proving where we are more realistic. Our policy is more realistic than your policy. How do you regard President de Gaulle's policy of recognizing Red China? I think it was a very wise policy. Very wise policy. And that proof once more that your policy is not a realistic policy. That proof is another example. You have spoken to me about that. I think it's a wise policy. Another thing, as you know, the Gaulle had played a very important paper 
in the modern French. My idea, of course, are my social idea, are not uh, and political idea are are quite different from uh, political idea of the goal. But the goal worked very much for French. In the worst days of French, he played a, a very important paper oh. and role, a very important role. And uh, French uh, has now a very important position in international matter. And while he he take measure like that, it is it is just that we recognize is a very wise policy. I I know that you don't like the policy, but it's a consequence of your mistakes, mistake in uh, in many places. But I am not going to give advice to you. I think you will learn with the time. What would you like to the say? England, the right? England. Yeah, I have to pose this. Wait a second. Wait a second. The England. Wait, wait, no, 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 my turn. Okay. The, what would you like to see the United States do as regards Cuba? Regard to Cuba, if I can make in a war to live in peace with Cuba is the only thing that I think. We wish that, but I am sure it's the only wise policy that the United States can take. But I, I, if I try to persuade you about that, many people are going to believe we are going, come say this? Sinking. Sinking. But we feel sure, we feel happy, we can live without the United States very well. We need peace, United States need peace, the world need peace. Our policy is a peace policy. And I think that is a good policy for every nation, every nation and of course for the United States. And I think you begin to understand the part of the problem. You begin, you begin to understand. And you will understand. I heard the fisherman to say the very intelligent thing that you have, you had a lot of things, long time, you don't appreciate simple things. He said, the fisherman that came to live here in Cuba, you see, one American that want to come to live in Cuba. Well, and uh, you will be wise with the time, like England, like French. You saw French had a, a, a lot of problems, colonial problems in Vietnam, in Argelia. They made the, made the peace with Vietnam, they made the peace with Argelia. Now they have good relations with Argelia. And nobody doubt that this is a better policy for French than the policy of war with Argelia. But what happened? French left a problem. And you, United States, took the problem. And <laughs> when the wise government leave, leave problem, you that are not wise, take the, pro take the problem. That is what is happening. The England are wise people too. But we feel, but we feel... Are wise people too, but <laughs> you wait, no, are wait, not wait, wait, wise people now. But we feel that we want to live in peace but that you are interested in exporting your revolution all over Latin America. Perhaps we, we can have live declare, in peace. We have declared very clearly that we are in condition of living in peace with all the nations. But it is necessary that the other nations, the others, live in peace with us too. We cannot demand uh, uh, 